All right, boys and girls. This is the last section of notes for calendar year 2016. I know you're all celebrating. You're planning your parties. Sounds like a lot of fun, right? It's going to be great. All right, so let's do this. So we are going to use exponential functions and equations to solve business and finance applications related to compound interest and annuities. Well, we're not going to have time to get to the annuities part, although I think that was really cool. I've got We have some really cool problems, um, mortgage, car, stuff like that, but with our time crunch, we don't really have time. Um, so unfortunately, we're going to kind of ixnay that. We may come back to it later in the year if it's we have time, but for now, if a principal P, P is the amount that you're investing, at a fixed annual rate or annual interest rate R calculated at the end of each year, then the value of the investment after N years is A equals capital P times the quantity 1 plus R to the N power, where R is expressed as a decimal. So your, per your annual rate percentage is going to be expressed as a decimal. So it's only being compounded once. That's what annually means. Every year, your money is only being compounded one time. So, suppose that Mike invests $500 at 7% interest compounded annually. Find the value of his investment 10 years later. Well, A would be how much money he's going to have. P is 500. That's how much he invested. 1 plus, excuse me, 7%. Okay, 7% is the interest rate. So we don't write 7%, though. We write 0.07. And then N is the number of years. Well, 10 years have passed. So, 500 times 1 plus 0.07 is 1.07 to the 10th power. Okay, so figure that out. So you get like 983.575 blah, blah, blah. Well... We are talking about money here, so we have to round to two decimal places. So our final answer would be $983.58. Okay? So very simple. We're just taking the information, we're plugging it in the formula, and we're solving. Next. What happens when your interest gets compounded more than once a year? So it says, suppose a principal P is invested at an annual interest rate R compounded K times a year for T years. But that's a lot of variables. Then R divided by K is the interest rate per compounding period. And KT is the number of compounding periods. The amount A in the account after T years, here it is, okay, so this time... We are compounding more than annual. So we're, we're compounding. Well, here's the thing. If we compound monthly, that's 12 months, right? If I go quarterly, what's quarterly? F every four months. Uh, Semi-annually. Sorry for my chicken scratch. That's six months. So in other words, monthly would be compounded 12 times in a year. Quarterly would be compounded three times in a year. And semi-annually would be compounded two times in a year. Now, unless there's something other than that, we'll get to it. But those are the main ones that you're going to see. Suppose Maria invest $500 at 9% interest, annual interest, compounded monthly. This is compounded 12 times a year. We just talked about that. Find the value of his, of his. Maria's his, I thought Maria was a her. Okay, well, Maria is a he, so we want to find the value of his investment five years later. So, A equals our principal, $500, times one 
plus. Now, R is the interest rate. K is how many times per year it got compounded, or how many times in a year it got compounded. So our rate is 0 0.09 for 9% divided by 12 to the 12 times 5 power. 12 is the number of times it got compounded. 5 is the number of years we are investing it. So we do a little handiwork in our calculators, and we come up with about 782.8. For zero blah 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 but again we're talking cash cash to the kids cash we're talking seven hundred and eighty two dollars and eighty four cents learn how to copy a number okay there we go all right so again plug and chug I mean you just got to make sure the right numbers go in the right places make sure you have your formulas available to you now this one's a little different. This says Amber has $500 to invest, fine, at 9% annual interest, compounded monthly. How long will it take for her investment to grow to $3,000? Well, we're going to use the interest compounded K times per year. So we're going to use this formula, okay? But here's the thing. What are we solving for? It says, how long will it take for her investment to grow to $3,000? Well, that means we're solving for T. Okay? So, A, we already know A. A is 3000 That's how much we're going to end up with. Okay? P is 500 because that's what she's investing. The interest rate is 0 0.09 divided by 12, because we're compounding monthly, to the K, which is 12, T power. So we're solving for T. Now our issue here is that we have a T in the exponent. So now what? Well, let's see. First things first, get the parentheses by themselves. Divide by 500. Okay? So 6 equals 1, well... Let, let's simplify what's in the parentheses. So this turns out to be 1.0075 to the 12t power. Okay, I just simplified what was in the parentheses, guys. Oh boy, now what? Well, we haven't done this yet, but we're going to now. And that is, we, oh here's the thing, let, let's go back for a second here. In the last section, we had a problem like this, and we rewrote the base. So the base, so we rewrote the two sides so that the bases were the same. Now I'm guessing that you can't tell me what power of 1.0075 is six. So we can't do that. What we can do is we can take the natural log of both sides. Okay. Now, you might be saying, well, Mr. Habit, how did you know to do that? Well, here's why, okay? Because I took the natural log of both sides, I can use my logarithmic properties to take the 12t and move it out in front. Thus, getting 12t out of the exponent and into a normal division situation. So... I have, oh boy, way to run out of room. So I have ln6 equals 12t times ln 1.0075. Okay. Now, when we solve for t, we're going to divide both sides by everything that's not a t. So t, oh, this is brutal is the natural log of 6 divided by 12 ln 1.0075. Okay, so we can really divide the right side by everything that surrounds t. So when you put that in your calculator, okay, you're going to get, sorry, we're moving up here since 
I decided to run out of room. When you put that in your calculator, you're going to get about 19 point... Oh, my gosh. Guys, I'm really sorry about this. I wrote too big. So T is approximately 19.983, yada, yada, yada. Okay? So it'll take... Ugh. So it'll take approximately 20 years for her money to get to be 3000 okay? So that is a situation where you're solving for a variable that is in an exponent, and that's the method to solve it with. I apologize for the uh, lack of room. It's my fault. Okay? Now, here's a question. Okay. Bailey has $500 to invest. What annual interest rate compounded quarterly, four times per year, is required to double her money in 10 years? By the way, I think I screwed up. <sighs> quarterly is three months, which means you're compounding four times. Oh. <sighs> It's the last section of calendar year 2016, boys and girls. I'm allowed a few mistakes. What annual interest rate compounded quarterly, four times per year, is required to double her money in 10 years? Now, what's 500 doubled? It's 1,000. So I have 1,000. That's what we want to end up with. Equals the amount I'm investing times 1 plus... Okay, the interest rate. We don't know what the interest rate is, but we do know that it's compounded four times per year. Okay, so the exponent is the number of times that we compounded in a year times the number of years. Well, that's four times ten. So here's what I have. I have a thousand equals, well, let's do this. Let's do this. Whoops. Divide by 500. So I get 2 equals 1 plus r over 4 e to the 40th power. Ooh. Boy, that's just... Ooh. Now, you ready for this? <laughs> Are you ready for this, kids? How do you get rid of the exponent of 40? Kind of like you get rid of the exponent of 2, right? You take the square root. How do you get rid of an exponent of 3? You take the cube root. How do you get rid of the exponent of 40? Well, kids, we are going to take the 40th root of both sides. That's right, the 40th root. Okay? Now, in your calculator, you're going to do 2 to the 140th power. Those are going to cancel, and you're going to be left with 1 plus r over 4. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know what 2 to the 140th is. I, I, I don't know. Um, I would round to the nearest three decimal places. Okay? So whatever that is, solve the equation now for r. So minus 1 to both sides. So you have whatever 2 to the 140th is. Minus 1 equals r times 4. Well, we have to multiply both sides by 4. So r is whatever 4 times 2 to the 140th minus 1 is. You have calculators. You can figure it out. Um, the answer, okay, the answer, r is approximately, approximately point. 0.699, which comes out to be about 7%, okay, if you rounded it. So that would be your interest rate. That would be required to double her money. Now, another way you could do this, another way you could do this, and I'm sure you'll all pick this method, okay, is you can graph this and you can graph this and find the point of intersection. You could do that too. Okay, 
So we have our formula that we already talked about when interest compounds K times a year, monthly, quarterly, whatever. However, what happens when interest compounds continuously so it never stops? What we use is we use this formula right here. A equals, I call it PERT, the shampoo, the shampoo formula. The principal times E to the RT power. R is the rate, T is the time, in years. So suppose Braxton, Braxton, Tony Braxton? No. Braxton Miller, Ohio State University. No, let's use him. Apparently Braxton only has 100 bucks, but he's going to invest it at 8% annual interest compounded continuously. Find the value of his investment at the end of each of the years. One, two, and all the way to seven. So there's going to be seven answers here, guys. So A equals the principal, 100, E to the 0 0.08 times 1, 1 year. So you have to figure out what 100e to the 0 0.08 power is. I'll leave that to you. And then you're going to do a equals 100e to the 0.8 times 2. So that will be 100e to the 0.16 power. And so on. Dot, dot, dot. Okay? Now, when I check your notes, I'm going to expect to see all seven of those answers, kids. So make sure you figure these out. That concludes. That concludes for the calendar year 2016, the notes and videos of pre-calculus. Starting in January, we will start 2017's videos. So I hope you'll stick around and tune in. I'm so happy to have been able to uh, educate you for those of you that watch the videos, but for those of you that don't, which is some of you, stupidly, but you don't, um, I hope you check us out, because uh, things can get a little interesting around here. Guys, have a wonderful holiday season, and uh, you will not see me again on YouTube until January. Some of you are saying, thank God, I have no comment for you. Have a great holiday, guys. Take care.